Hello friends, welcome to our channel Knowledge Amplifier. So today in this particular video, we are going to discuss about a very simple data validation framework. So first of all, let us try to understand what is data validation. So it is nothing but a method for checking the accuracy of our data and the quality of data which is flowing and getting processed via our big data pipelines. Okay, so it is a very vital part in any data pipeline because suppose the business is taking some decision based on wrong data, it might lead to some business loss, right? So we need to make sure the data based on which the business teams are taking some decisions that is correct, accurate and the data quality is very high, right? So we should always do the data validation in the early stage itself and often we should validate the data which is getting flown and processed via our big data pipeline, right? So let us try to understand one interesting data validation framework using which we can automate the complete data quality checks or data validation process. Okay, so here first I will go to Snowflake and this particular data validation demo I am going to show you with Snowflake data but you can apply this particular concept in any system where data is placed in such place where you can query your data using SQL queries. Okay, then this particular framework you can utilize not a problem. So first here what we are doing, we are dropping a database if it exists, we are using account admin role and we are creating that fresh database, right? And then here we are using that particular database and here we are creating a dummy table on which we will do the data validation. So here it is having three columns, first column is string type, rest two columns are integer type, column names are A, B, C respectively. So I create this dummy table and we will insert some data in it, okay? So here data is inserted. So if you see this particular data point, this last column is basically C column, right? So for C column, I kept one value as null. So here if you execute select count star from this particular table where C is null, you are getting count as one, right? If you want to execute some other value also, you can get it using SQL queries. Like for example, select mean of second column from the dummy table. So our second column is having value one, two, three. So minimum value is one. So it is giving one, right? Now here we need to create a data validation framework. So as part of that particular framework, what we are going to do, we are going to write some predefined SQL queries, which SQL queries will be running against our table and it will give some result and we will verify whether the result is expected or not. Okay, as simple as that. So here we are creating a table called create or replace table DQ check. DQ is data quality. Okay. Then here we are providing the table name for which we want to have data quality check or data validation and then description. What feature of that particular table or what property of that table we want to check that description you can put here. Then SQL query 1, SQL query 2. This we are putting and the comparison type. What is that? I will explain you soon. So let's create the table and then let's try to understand what this column signifies. Okay. SQL query 1, SQL query 2 and comparison type. So for example, here I am inserting a data. What I am inserting? Insert into DQ check, that is data quality check, value. The table name for which we want to do data quality check is dummy table. Dummy table is basically this particular table what just now we created, okay? Against that particular table, we want to validate the data. So the table name we have passed. Now the description, what we want to check? We want to check whether all values of the column C are not null or not, okay? That is, as per our business logic, suppose the C column is such that the C column cannot take null values. So if the C column is having null values, that means it is having bad data or the data quality for the C column is not correct, right? That we have to validate in automated manner. So in description, what we have written, check if all values of C are not null. Okay, now how we can check whether C column is having any null value or not? The query is very simple select count star from the table dummy table where c is null. This particular query should return zero result as per business requirement. Okay, so if we are applying the filter c is null, ideally we should get zero result. Okay, so in SQL query 1, we will be putting that particular query which will be executed against our table where our data is sitting and it will give us a single value. Okay, so count star will return a single value and this particular count star is basically returning the value that for this many rows, the C column is having null value. Okay, ideally, what is the expected result? Expected result is zero. So in SQL query 2, we will pass another SQL query which will basically return a single value against which we will compare the result set of the first SQL query. Okay, 
So in the SQL query 2 column, we are putting select 0. Why select 0? Because C column cannot be null as per business logic. So this particular SQL query 1 should return result 0 and the second SQL query also here we are returning 0. So the SQL query 1 and then SQL query 2 should be matching. Okay. So here we want to make sure that SQL query 1 result set and SQL query result set are exactly matching. So the comparison type for the two SQL query result set we have kept equals. Like that you can compare based on greater than equal, less than equal, less than, greater than etc etc. I will come to that how we are comparing. Now the second data quality check what we are putting is again on dummy table. Here we are checking whether all the values for A column is unique or not. Okay. So here if you see in our this particular table A column is there and as per business use case the A column cannot have duplicate value. So for duplicate value check what we can use SQL query very simple just group by on column A and then use having plus and check whether count greater than 1 available or not. Okay that same thing we have done with A dupes as here basically we are applying a CTE or common table expression. Select A comma count star as count value from the table group by A that is on A column we are doing a group by having count value greater than 1. So ideally as per business use case in this particular case A value should be unique for all the rows right. So here count greater than 1 based on group by of A column we should get 0 result right. So here if we are doing select count star from A underscore dupes which is basically our common table expression view name this SQL query 1 again should return 0 result as per business use case right. So for that comparison in the SQL query 2 we have kept select 0 so it will also return 0. So the SQL query 1 and SQL query 2 results should be exactly matching. So here we have kept the comparison type as equals okay. The third use case what we have kept is check the minimum value for B column is 2 okay. So as per business use case the column B should not have any value which is lesser than 2 okay right. So what we can do to get the minimum value for the B column the SQL query 1 we can keep as select min of B from dummy table okay right. Now whatever this particular query will return that should be always greater than equal to value 2 okay right. So here the SQL query 2 the second SQL query we have kept select 2 so it will give us the value 2 and the first SQL query should have always value greater than or equal to the result set of our SQL query 2 okay that is SQL query 1 will return such result which is always greater than equal to the SQL query 2 which is basically select 2 that means it will return 2 so we are just trying to check whether minimum value of B column is greater than or equal to 2 or not. So in this case earlier we used equals equals but this time the comparison type is greater than or equal to okay the minimum value of B column should be greater than or equal to the value 2 okay like that we have written the insert queries okay. So all I am trying to say is SQL query 1 is basically one SQL query which will be executing in our source system and then SQL query 2 will also return one particular value and that particular value we want to compare with our result set of the first SQL query and how we want to compare that is decided by the comparison column whether that is greater than equal to less than equal to greater than less than equal etc etc okay right. So here we have inserted all these SQL queries now if I run this particular SQL query here we will see that our metadata table is ready here description then here these are the queries what will be executed for data validation these are the expected result and how we should compare that is also drafted here okay right now let's go to python and let's see what we are doing here so what we will do basically we will read this particular data we will execute this query sql query 1 and sql query 2 and we will compare based on the comparison type as simple as that okay so here we are importing all the necessary modules now here we are having a function run query this particular function you can utilize to execute any sql query for which you are not expecting any return result okay now here is another function we have created which will return a single value after executing the query this one already i discussed in my previous video also so if you check all the sql query 1 or sql query 2 in our case always return a single value so we are going to utilize this run query 1 so i have created that as a function because again and again if we are executing a part of our code then better to keep as a function and call it whenever required. 
Now here we are having a function execute test case. Here we are having basically our snowflake connection. Then here script one, script two. Script one is basically our SQL query one, which it will be executing. Script two is basically our SQL query two. And then here the comparison type. Okay. Now here what we are doing using run query one, that is using this particular function, we are executing our script one and script two. And based on comparison operator, we are comparing. So suppose in the comparison operator in the metadata table it is configured as equals like for example this case. So what is expected that return value for this SQL query 1 and SQL query 2 should be exactly matching as per business use case right. So here what we are doing we are returning result 1 equal to equal to result 2. Whereas result 1 is basically nothing but outcome of SQL query 1 and result 2 is nothing but outcome of our SQL query 2 okay. So if they are equal then it will return true or else it will return false okay. Then here suppose for example we have configured comparison type as greater equals. So here what we are doing? Here it will enter in this elif block or this particular branch and then here it is expecting whether the result 1 that is outcome or result set of our SQL query 1 is greater than equal to outcome of our SQL query 2 or not. Okay. If the condition satisfies it will return true or else it will return false. Like that only greater than, then less than equal, only less than, not equal and last case is false. If it comes here, then that means something wrong we need to investigate further. But these all branching conditions are fulfilling all the different kind of comparisons, right? Now what we need to do? Now we need to read the metadata table and execute all these rows. Okay, all the SQL query 1 and SQL query 2. So for that what we are doing here? We are setting up our connection. I have not written user ID, password and account. I will give that. And we are creating a snowflake connection. Now here suppose for dummy table. Here our table for which the data we want to validate. The name is dummy table, right? So for dummy table, we want to extract all the conditions what we have to check. So here what we are doing, select star from DQ check. DQ check is basically our metadata table name. Where table name is dummy table. We are executing the query. And we are loading the data in pandas data frame. We are closing the cursor. Okay. And then here we are iterating in that pandas data frame. Which is basically storing all the metadata informations. Basically SQL query checks for our original table. And then here we are extracting the table name, description. And then SQL query 1, SQL query 2, the comparison type etc etc. And then we are calling the execute test function. Which is basically taking the SQL query 1, SQL query 2 and comparison type and it will return whether the test case is passed or failed. It will return basically true or false. So if it is true, we can conclude that the test case is passed or else it is failed. Okay, we are printing the test case also and then once all the test cases are executed, the status we are continuously storing in a pandas data frame and then finally we will print this particular pandas data frame. The data frame in which all the test case result will be stored is basically named as test case output df. Okay. So in the test case output df, we will be having two columns. One is what we want to check. That is the description. If you see these are the things what we want to check and the output, whether the test case is passed or failed. Right. So that particular will be in status column. Okay. So test case output df we have already configured here. The column names are check description and status. And then finally it will be storing the pass state or fail state for any test case or validating our data or data quality check. Okay, right. So this is basically our very simple SQL query and Python based framework using which we can validate our data. And this is not only applicable for Snowflake. You can basically use this particular framework for validating the data where the source system is such that it can be queried using SQL query. Okay, right. Now. Here in this particular case, what result set we should get? So select counter from dummy table where C is null. We should get actually zero rows such. So here if you see in our dummy table, there is one null data point for C column, right? So this particular test case will fail. Now here we are checking whether A column has unique value or not. So if you see our A column, the values are foo, bar and pass. So that means A column is having unique value. So this particular test case will pass and then minimum value for the B column should be 2. But here if you see the B column is having value 1 also, right? So this particular data validation will also fail, right? So for this one, it will fail. For this one, it will pass. And for this one, again, it will fail. So let's execute this particular code and let's see what output we are getting. 
so here we are getting user is empty so user is empty because here we have not given user id password and account details so i'll just quickly populate those values so account details here this is my unique id and then i need to provide in which location my account is sitting that is basically in us is 2.aws and i'll also provide the user id password which i cannot show you so i have configured that and now let's run the code So here you see all the checks it is doing performing check check if all values of c column are null or not okay so for doing that validation what we are doing we are executing this query in our table dummy table that is select count star from dummy table where c is null so if the c column value should be not null as per business use case this particular sql query should return zero result so the second sql query we are executing select zero so result set of the first Query is 1, second is 0 and we are basically comparing based on equals because they are not matching so it returns false. Like that, one SQL query it is executing against source, the second SQL query is the expected result, both it is trying to tally, if they are getting matched, the test case result is pass or else fail. So if you see the final result, here it is giving this, okay, this is the summary. So C column value not null as per business use case but it failed because here in our table c column is having null value right then a column value should be unique it is passed because here foo bar pass so all are basically unique so a column passed this particular check passed and the minimum value of b column is 2 again that is failed so it should not be false it should be failed let me just update it else failed okay like that so i hope you are getting the main point actually so let me show you one demo maybe for example i will try to insert some data in the table insert into dummy table and then here values we can put maybe this one okay so here what we are doing maybe i can change the b value to 10 so here i am entering a duplicate value in the a column already foo value is there now we are again entering so if I execute this one, what will happen that our data quality check will fail, right? Because here if you see that a column value as per business use case should be unique. But here intentionally I populated one duplicate value. Now let's see what this particular code will return. So here see all checks failed. Because now in the A column, there is duplicate values. Earlier, it, this particular data validation check was passing, but now this is also failing. So I hope you got the point, a very simple data validation framework. Obviously, before going to production, you can make this little better and handle all the more complex edge cases, right? So anyway, this you can consider as base code and you can obviously add cherry or sugar coating on top of it to make it a production ready framework python code and snowflake queries i'll be providing in the description box or in the comment section just try to play with it have fun and then you will understand this particular framework working principle in a much better way so this is all for my this video if you find this video helpful then please like share and comment subscribe our channel if you have not subscribed till now and don't forget to press the bell icon to get the notification of our latest videos Thank you for watching.